Hey friends, tomorrow is the launch of the brand new Ryzen 5000 series chips on November 5th and just in a couple of weeks we're expecting the RX 6000 series to come out from AMD. So I wanted to give you a build guide to know what kind of pricing you should be expecting if you're going to be building a brand new all AMD PC if you decide to go the Ryzen 7 route with the 5800X and slap the RTX 3080 in the face with its RX 6800 XT equivalent. So we're going to go over that, give you everything that you can expect but we'll have a google doc down below in the video description for you to check out so that you can check all of the parts there in case you want to be looking at that and all of these are affiliate links so we make a small kickback if you make any of these purchases but you're not obliged to purchase anything that we talk about this is just how i would build the next ryzen 5000 series and rx 6000 series pc if i was doing it right now so just to go over the specs of the ryzen 750 800x which is going to be the linchpin of this build it's an eight core 16 thread chip with up to 4.7 gigahertz base and it looks to be about 15 to 20 percent faster than the 3800x which is looking to be pretty good the rx 6800 xt we don't know much about its performance from third-party reviews but you can see here it has 72 compute units up to 2.25 gigahertz boost clock and according to benchmarks that have been published recently if you use the ryzen 5000 series processors with the rx 6000 series gpus you get faster results because of what amd is calling smart access memory so you might see the best benefit out of AMD's GPUs with Ryzen 5000 series chips. This will not work on Ryzen 3000 series or previous chips according to AMD at this point, but we don't know if that'll change in the future. But based on the benchmarks here with the 5900X, you can see that the 6800 XT beats even the 3090 in some instances and comes out right around or better than the RTX 3080. And considering the fact that it's going to cost $50 less than the 3080 puts it in a really great price to performance advantage so the entire build is based around the premise of the $449 5800X and the $649 RX 600 XT so that is going to account for $1100 of this total build but we're coming in right around $2000 now let's start with the motherboard I actually think it might be wise to go B550 for this simply because the X570s typically don't offer really any advantages over the B550s if you're not looking for higher end features this B550A Pro from MSI is actually a really good, just middle of the run B550 that's going to give you the PCI Express 4.0 support that you need, as well as supporting the new Ryzen 5000 series chips with a 10 phase VRM that's going to be able to deliver all the power that you need to that eight core chip and potentially even the 5900X. I'm currently using MSI's MPG B550 Gaming Plus and I've enjoyed every moment of it. So MSI making some decent boards, the B550A Pro is a good middle of the road however if b550 isn't your bag of chips you can look into x570 we've been using the msi x570 unify in our streaming rig since january of this year as you can see right here 300 dollars is a little steep but you're getting extra features that you wouldn't get on the b550 such as two and a half gig lan but you can get two and a half gig lan on a b550 you don't have to go x570 for that but there is a lot that you get with the x570 unify and it looks really sleek but it's 300 dollars. so i'd say go for a higher end b550 in case you want more features like the two and a half gig LAN port but you don't necessarily have to go x570 it actually kind of feels like x570 is a weird place where b550 offers most of the features than you would otherwise get now to cool that 5800x honestly you might be able to go in air cooler but i will say that the kraken x53 from nzxt is always a solid choice coming in at 130 dollars I've been using this for a while. It can cool whatever you're throwing at. We use it to cool our 3950X for quite some time on our editor's rig. So cooling the 5800X should be no problem. X Kraken X53, just a great all around cooler. Now for the RAM, this is where some interesting information has come out behind the scenes. And we might know more as benchmarks likely go live today. I'm not sure when the embargo is up. But according to reports that we're hearing, you might be able to even get up to DDR4 3800 megahertz working on Ryzen 5000 in an effective way. But for this build, until we get more information or until RAM manufacturers make cheaper versions, we're going to stick with 3600 megahertz RAM. And again, it's an old classic and old favorite, the Corsair Vengeance RGB Pro. I use these in a lot of builds. They look clean. They look classy. They're $90 for the DDR4 3600, 16 gigs. You could obviously bump this up to 32 gigs if you want. I believe that'll run you around $150 as opposed to this $90 for the 16 gigs. 
gigs, but 16 gigs is going to be the bare minimum that you're going to need for a gaming PC here in 2021, especially if you're building out the 5800X with the 6800 XT. I wouldn't go lower than this, but it also just looks clean and sleek, and I highly recommend it. I also highly recommend the SSD suggestion that we're going with here, which is the Sprint one terabyte Rocket NVMe 4.0 drive. You can see that I purchased one back in December of last year. It's been running strong for me ever since. However, this is going for $200 and it's great. You're getting right around five gigabytes per second read and write, which is where you need to be for a PCI Express 4.0 drive. It's taking full advantage of everything that's going on in the B550. However, in case you want to splurge just a little bit, you can spend $30 more and pick up one of these. This is the Samsung 980 Pro one terabyte NVMe 4.0 drive. This is probably the fastest consumer drive on the market right this moment. Seven gigabytes per second read and a little under that for writing. Very fast drives, $230, not actually that large of a squeeze. And stay tuned for a future video where I'm gonna be putting four of these into an expansion card and we're gonna see how fast we can get this in the VME 4.0 storage just from consumer drives out on the market. So stay tuned for that, get subscribed to UFD Tech for all that information. Now, how are you gonna store all of this? Well, I've got a couple recommendations here. The first is the Lian Li Landcool 2 Mesh. Again, this is just based off of personal recommendation. We've been using the Landcool 2 Mesh in our editor's rig for the last several months and it's a good looking case. It's going to house off your components. It's going to show them off effectively and make everything look really beautiful. And plus that mesh gives you all of the airflow that you need. You could go with something like the Fantex P600S as well. That that would be encouraged. I could also potentially say pick up the Lian Li PCO 11 Air. A lot of people go with the O11 Dynamic. It's more of a water cooling case. I think going with the O11 Air is gonna give you better thermals just overall because it does have the airflow cutouts and it's slightly cheaper at that $140 price point. Now, let's talk about how to power this. Thankfully, according to what we're hearing from AMD, you don't need as big of a power supply to power the 6800 XT as you do the 3080, but it's only 20 watts less. So we're gonna go with the 750 watt power supply here. You might wanna go for 850, you really don't have to. 750 watts should be more than enough for you, but the Corsair RM series is a good series of power supplies. They are RM750 watt, 80 plus gold, fully modular, coming in at $135. It's kinda in stock. It was in stock when I looked at this. Now it's saying delivered by December 15th. Bummer. Essentially, finding power supplies is gonna be a hard task at this moment. There's still weird stock issues going on with them. I'll update the list on the Google Doc with updated power supplies that might ship sooner than that RM750 watt, but 750 to 850 watts is where you should probably be for this build, and you're gonna come in at a price point if you choose the cheapest components that I've suggested of $1,941.21. If you choose the more expensive ones, you're gonna come right around that $2,000 mark, but to get a brand new top of the line system that's going to run the 6800 XT as fast as it needs to go with that system access memory from AMD 2000 bucks is what you're looking at right there 1100 of that is already the CPU and the GPU but I'm curious to hear from you guys down below in the comments are you looking to upgrade to a brand new all AMD gaming PC or are you going to piece it out and chunk it out and just try to get the GPU first and then potentially upgrade the CPU down the line or Honestly, I'm highly curious about Ryzen 3000 series owners. If you're on the 3700X, 3900X, are you considering upgrading to Ryzen 5000 for that system access memory to pair with the RX 6000? Is that influencing your decisions on this next gen purchase? Or is it something that's not really a concern and you feel like you're gonna get most of the performance anyways? I wanna hear from you guys down below in the comments. Let me know what you think of this build. Obviously, some of these things are up to personal preference, choosing a different RAM based on your aesthetic choices or even potentially the case. You could go with a whole host of different things there, but I'll leave the link to the Google Doc down below as well as update some recommendations as things go in and out of stock in case that matters to you. But that is the video for the Ryzen 5000 RX 6000 series PC build. I'm Brett with the UFD Tech Channel. Thank you so much for watching. I will catch you in the next video, friends. Cheers.